Hey guys, welcome to Rosie's Dessert Spot. I've had a fair few people asking me how to use an airbrush, so this tutorial will be dedicated to airbrushing techniques and airbrushing 101. So this is the airbrush that I use. This is the Wada Studio Series. I used to use a, a single action airbrush. That was the Dinky Doodle airbrush. This gives you a lot more control because it is dual action. So we'll go over a couple of terms here. Dual action means that your gun um, needs two actions in order to function. So first of all, you have to press down on your trigger and that releases the air as you could hear there. And to release the ink, you have to pull back your trigger. With a single action airbrush, all you have to do is pull back the trigger and the air flows out automatically. Some single action airbrushes don't give you the control uh, of the airflow, whereas the dual action airbrush, this one here in particular, gives you control over the amount of air that's passing through your gun. So you can have at maximum, meaning a lot of air is being pushed through your gun, and at minimum. For more detailed work, so you get less air coming through and a lot more control with your ink. So I'll turn on my compressor, and that's just a little switch over here. And you can hear that going, the airflow. Like I said before, to release the air, you press down, and to release the ink, you pull back. Now for this first example, I'm going to show you how to do some very simple shading on a rose. So my compressor is at full power, so the air is coming out pretty quickly and pretty um, hard on pressure. I'm going to bring that to about halfway, so pulling it back so less air is coming through, but only maybe like a, like a medium strength. Now there are two reasons why I change the air pressure to medium strength. One, because as I go over this rose, I don't want it to be moving around. If a lot of air was coming through here at a very kind of um, tight, large pressure, this will start blowing away everywhere. So if you have it at half speed slash half pressure, that won't happen. Secondly, I want the color to be um, not so dispersed. If you have a lot of pressure, you can imagine it just goes boop, whereas you only want it to kind of shade in a, like a tighter space. Now into the airbrush little cavity there I'm going to add in my edible uh, airbrush colour. You can see this bottle's well loved. It's by Americolor and it's a red sheen airbrush colour. And then just add in a couple of drops. Go two drops, you don't need very much at all. And this particular gun is a gravity feed so the cavity at the top is slanted so that the gravity pushes the ink down towards the nozzle of your gun. So as you're spraying, you'll want to keep it at an angle as well, rather than spraying straight up, you want to keep it at an angle. So I'll hold my gun steady with my other hand, and I'll place it directly over. I'm going to press down to release the air and bring back slowly. Now I only want to bring this trigger back halfway, because otherwise you'll get like this huge blast of colour. So for example, this is the halfway mark, and this is the full mark. You can see the difference between the two. And since you have a very small space that you're working with, you'll only want to pull back halfway just to create that smaller level of spray. So I'm just going to spray the inside of the rose. So pressing down and slowly pulling that trigger back and working in a circular motion. Just a little darker in the center, working even smaller circular motions, just targeting that center area. And another thing is how close you are to your subject. So, I'll do it on this flower here. If you want a general thicker spray of color, then you'll work further away from your object. If you want to have really um, pinpointed color, you work a lot closer to your object. So for example, that compared to further away, compared to even further away, and you can see how, how close you are to your subject and how far away you are also depends on the amount of coverage that you're going to get. Now I'll demonstrate how to cover a whole object with colour. So this is just a little bit of gum paste that I cut out and I'm working a good 10 centimeters away from it. I'm going to pull back on my trigger. And as I said before you could do circular motions. But with these I actually find it a lot easier to do back and forth, but you'll want to make sure that you start off of your subject and end off of your subject so you get that even line sort of coverage. So now to change colour on your airbrush gun, add a little bit of water. This is a syringe that I've filled with some warm water. So fill your cavity with some water, place the nozzle on the inside of a piece of tissue and pull back the trigger completely. 
and this will clean the airbrush gun. You'll probably need to do this about three times. Okay, take two. You can see it's really nice and diluted. Last one. And here you can see it's nice and clear. Add just a drop because we're not covering very much at all. So if you were to move it from side to side, you'll start, see this is your object that you're going to cover. You want to start off it and you'll want to end off it as well. Simply because if you see here, you'll get areas of saturation where you are started and left off and then the center will be nice and even. So that's why when you're covering using back and forth motion and I'm pressing my trigger only ever so slightly, maybe a quarter of the way back and I'm working off of my object and building up that color slowly. The reason why you want to build the color slowly is because it gives it a lot more time to um, dry. If you were to add like whoo, a huge slab, you've got a whole bunch of ink there that's just, oops, a whole bunch of ink there that's just sitting on top of itself and it's going to take ages to dry because there's a lot of it there. The thinner your layers, the quicker that will dry. And we're adding those layers of color on also because the more layers you add, the darker that particular section will be. So if you want to keep the middle section nice and light, you'll just continue working over the sections that you want darker. And bring that down a little. So you can see it's a lot darker than transitions into a lighter blue. Starting off and ending off of your subject. Working down and then adding the color in layers. Now moving on to stenciling. I've got my little fondant circle here. Placing my stencil directly over the top and when airbrushing a stencil, I always, always like to add something to block off those holes. So for example, buttercream is one thing that I use with stencils and hold it steady and then just brush it over the top. The reason I'm doing this is because I don't want that airbrush color to reach underneath the hole and contaminate other areas outside of the stencil. And this time I'll go in circular motions. This gives you really good coverage. I'm about 10 centimeters away from my stencil, pulling that trigger back about one third of the way. And I'm going over it twice. Just building on that color. Pressing down on one side, should do it this way. I'm pulling back on the other side. You can see just how neat that is. If you went to put the buttercream over the top, then you'll risk this happening. And this looks really dodgy as it is, so just try and concentrate on the brown airbrush. See how you have those really not so sharp lines of the stencil? It looks really kind of um, out of focus, whereas this is nice and sharp when you add your buttercream. Here I demonstrate some more shading using a fondant rose. So I'd go in the middle, I'm about maybe 10 centimeters away from my subject to release the air, pulling it back to release a little bit of color ever so slowly because you'll find that at the very beginning you might end up with like some really thick blotch and it takes a while for it to come out the way you want it to. So I'll just do little circular motions and then larger circular motions, angling further and further away from my rose as I work with the outside layer of petals and then closer where I want the darker patches to be. I'm going to add in a little bit of yellow just to turn it a teensy bit orange and I'll go in through the sides with circular motions. I'll take my rose, sort of angle it to get underneath those petals and this just takes a little bit of practice and as you keep going you'll sort of develop your own style your own technique of using an airbrush all right and that's the tutorial for this week this is the airbrush 101 tutorial I hope these tips came come in handy for you guys if you ever do try to use an airbrush if you have an airbrush and you've been too scared to use it 
definitely give it a shot. This is really, really fun work to do. Thanks again guys for tuning in and I'll catch you next time.